Hey guys, welcome. Yeah, so part six here, and feel free to pause and read the question, but what we have to do is find the volume of this tetrahedron right here. And we can do this using either double integrals or triple integrals, and I'm going to show you how to do both in this video, yeah? All right, cool, cool. Um, now, um, quick reminder, the red axis is the x-axis, uh, green axis is y-axis, blue axis is z-axis. Also, our tetrahedron has four faces. Um, three congruent right triangles make the left face, right face, and the bottom face. And the front face is an equilateral triangle defined by the plane x plus y plus z equals 1. So if we're uh, using double integrals, we know that we have to write the double integral over some region D of ZDA, right? And um, the region D is going to be in the xy plane, and here it will be this right triangle uh, in the bottom of our um, tetrahedron. And so that's the region um, D. And so we do uh, double integral over this region D of Z times DA, where DA is either dy dx or dx dy, and we're going to go with dy dx. Now, um, since our surface here is this front face, that's like what's hovering above the xy plane, so to speak. Well, it touches it here in this line, but yeah, what's that's our surface in this case. Um, we want to solve for z in this equation because this surface is given by this plane x plus y plus z equals 1. And by the surface, I mean this equilateral um, front face of our tetrahedron. And so if we solve for um, z in this equation that defines that plane, then z will have to equal 1 minus x minus y. And so the double integral over uh, the region d here and the base of z dA will look like this. As I said, z is 1 minus x minus y, and so here is a double integral. And unsurprisingly, since we're going with dy dx, our region d here has bounds along y that are two lines. One of them is this line here, which is y equals 0, or the x-axis, and the other is this line right here, which is y equals 1 minus x, also given by x plus y equals 1 when z is equal to 0, right? This line right here. Okay, cool, cool. Okay, and so then the outermost limits right here have to be numbers, and that's for x, and clearly x goes from 0 to 1, and that's how we would have done this using double integrals. So what's the triple integral approach? And it's pretty sweet, because um, for double integrals, ZDA is telling us, hey, this is what you have to add up. Take a small, um, infinitesimally small rectangle in the xy plane and have its dimensions be dy dx, that is, its area be um sorry, have its dimensions be dy by dx, so its area be dy dx or da, right? So that's in the xy plane, our infinitesimally small rectangle. And then we give it height by multiplying it by z, and z, our height, tells it to stop when it encounters our surface, this front equilateral triangular face of our tetrahedron. That's so hard to say and get right, like in one shot. But anyway, anyway, yeah, you get it, you get it. That's why we have zda, and that's a double integral approach. But the triple integral approach, which is pretty cool, says do this instead, which is instead of anchoring yourself with an infinitesimally small rectangle uh, and the base of your solid, just have an infinitesimally small cube floating in the middle of your solid. Um, and so that cube would look something like this. Obviously, we need to be able to see it, but pretend like this is infinitesimally small. Then it would have dimensions dx by dy by, sorry, dx, which is um, this way along the x-axis, dx, right? And then dy uh, this way, and then dz north. So this is our infinitesimally small cube inside of our solid, right? And so imagine this, and its volume uh, for this infinitesimally small cube would be uh, multiplying these three guys in any order, right? Uh, we can want, if we want it, we can write dy times dx times dz, but let's just agree that we're going to define it as dz times dy times dx, but you can multiply it in any order. And let's call that volume dv for this very small, infinitesimally um, small cube, right? Okay, okay. So it's volume dv is dz times dy times dx. Got it. And so if we start with that, then clearly we need three integral signs. So here is what we have to do. We have to integrate dv over e as opposed to d. And e here is um, this tetrahedron. So the whole tetrahedron is e here, as opposed to confining ourselves 
um, to the region D in the XY plane and multiplying by Z. Here we have an infinitesimally small cube floating in the middle of our um, tetrahedron. And we're going to have three integral signs. And these three integral signs are going to be the confines in all three directions, right? The limits in the three directions. First of all, as we've already agreed, dV is um, dz times dy times dx. So we lead with the bounds for z. So this first integral here will be the limits of z. Well, in our case, the limits of z are uh, the floor and the ceiling in general, too. If we lead with uh, dz, um, the limits will be the bottom and top of your solid. And so here are the uh, floor and the ceiling. And the floor is clearly z equals 0. And the ceiling is clearly z equals um, 1 minus x minus y or 1 minus y minus x, right? Cool. So those are the bounds for z. And then the bounds for y, well, um, the bounds for y and x are the bounds for our region D. We've talked about that. And so this is what it did look like to start. <laughs> sorry, sorry, guys. Stuttering one too many times in this video. But yeah, but yeah, you get it. You get it. Okay, so that, right, right? Okay, and then uh, we integrate uh, with respect to uh, z first. And so the integral of dz is just z. And we evaluate from 0 to 1 minus x minus y. And so we'd get this. Oh, wait. Now this integral looks exactly like our double integral. Remember, I told you, or maybe I didn't say it in this recording. I've recorded this video maybe like five, six, seven times. Yeah, in some previous recording anyway, I mentioned at the start that uh, double and triple integrals are like basically the same after the beginning, right? And so you see that here. Like what we would have had to do to finish our double integral is the same as what we have to do now to finish our triple integral which is like, yeah, do more integrals. Um, okay, now we have to integrate with respect to y next. And remember, anything that doesn't have a y is treated like a constant. So when we integrate with respect to y, this guy here, we're going to get 1 times y minus x times y, because x is treated like a constant, and then minus y squared over 2. And we integrate um, that, or we evaluate that from 0 to 1 minus x. So what I just said will look like this here. Right? Okay, now we evaluate, meaning we plug in 1 minus x for y here, y there, and y there. Obviously, plugging in 0 annihilates everything. And so here is um, stuff plugged in, and now we just have to integrate with respect to x, and that's all we have left to do. But we have a bit of algebra to do here. Like, you could do the algebra in like a few clever ways, uh, the first of which is to factor out the 1 minus x from all three of these guys, because they can all afford it. Um, it doesn't matter how you choose to do your algebra. You can um, get to the same place after a few steps. But yeah, clearly I chose the route that I um, just suggested. And now we need space. So there. Um, all right. All right. Uh, and and so just a reminder of where we left off right there. And what next? Well, we'll do a bit more simplifying. Is this the same step? Yes, it is. Okay, so I guess we could have skipped this step. Okay, and basically do a bit more simplifying. You'll see that 1 minus x times this quantity reduces to just this here. Yeah? Okay, cool, cool. And so that's just the algebra I spoke of. Do your algebra. And now we can take out a 1 half if we want to go simple and then FOIL 1 minus x squared after taking out the 1 half. And that's the path I chose. You could integrate exactly as is, right? The antiderivative of this clearly would be 1 minus x all to the third power uh, divided by 6 and then times negative 1. I think about why I said times negative 1 at the end. But yeah, you could do you could do that if you want to be clever. Or you could, you know, take a, a few more steps and that's okay. So take the 1 half first and then FOIL here. And um, if we do all that, we get here. And we know how to integrate with respect to just x uh, when we're just dealing with x's. And there that is. And you evaluate and stuff. And um, there that is. And so you get this number, which is the final answer. Yeah. All right. Cool. 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 I hope you enjoyed this. And um, yeah, um, keep watching. Uh, part seven is really cool. And um, yeah, take care.